Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Play Grey Matter. It's been a time since I've done any recording due to a variety of reasons, due to various different people's health. I'm in there, I'm included in that, but it's not just me. And so it's been a bit weird, and I was a bit confused as to where we were going to start. Now I remember that we started the next chapter, and now we're playing as David Styles, who I'm sweating was horribly bad. I, there's been a lot of fostering stuff popping up recently. But I, I don't know how old we are, so I don't know, like, David Styles is... So I'm not sure if it's something like... Uh, something happened, and... Um, they, he had to he had to give up Sam, and she got fostered or something. But she's interested in fostering and something. There was something in a bag, if memory serves. So I don't know if there was a connection there. Because he, he had a thought about that anyway, didn't he? He had a panic because of the radio. Yes. I know I felt Laura in that bed this morning. Um, just looking at him, because he used to be a doctor, I'm thinking Phantom of the Operating Room. This is the music of the night shift. The science books I can find. Aww. <gasps> juggly balls! J juggly balls? You're juggling balls. Back in English, we have private lab key. David's wallet, which contains 35 pounds. David's diary. Ah, uh, okay, so that's just reading what we've done. I don't know why I carry my wallet. I hardly ever leave the house. Yeah, I'm not wearing that mask, I wouldn't. Oh, upstairs hall. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. No! Let's get back into our room. What other things we got available? Closet and the bathroom. Let's have a look at our ensuite, shall we? Ooh, oh, no. Various things. Shower. Those are mine. Well, it's your bathroom. I'd be surprised if they weren't. Oh, hello. Cabinet. Toilet Most products. items in here belong to Laura. I've never allowed Stella to touch them. Getting very Victorian vibes. Uh, as in, uh, Queen Victoria, after Albert died, made her servants lay out his clothes every day as if he were still alive. It sounds a little bonkers, if you ask me. Um... Oh, you're keeping the dress, are you? I can't look at that dress without remembering how Laura looked in it. She was radiant in white. Yeah, and every single time you look at that, it's going to raise, like, bring back the issues attached to it. And all the grief and whatnot. These are not the clothes I would have associated with you. Good sir. Okay. Draw. Draw. Okay. Huh. Seems odd to have drawers and nothing in them. Right, we can now go into the private laboratory, though. So we probably should. Run! Run in your own house! Actually, actually oh no, I don't want to do that, actually. Let's go and visit Stella, assuming you're here. Good morning. 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 Mm. Tea and toast? Want it in the lab as usual? Not yet. I'll eat later. You need to eat, David. Later, Stella. As you say. Anything interesting? Let's have a gant at the notice board and see what he says. It's a business card from Inspector Pazer of the Oxford Police Department. He was the investigator on the accident. Hmm. Simon's business card with his phone number. I don't know who that is. Who's Simon? Well, that's just that's all there is on that one. Okay. 
Hmm. Have you noticed anything unusual in the house lately? What do you mean? I don't know. Signs of a break-in or intruder or just the presence of someone else in the house. No, no. <laughs> no, of course not. Hmm. The girl. That girl lurking about. You mean Sam? She went over to the university. Good. Oh, fat lot of good that does to my files. So, what do you think of her? Who? Sam, of course. You are a bear this morning. She seems an independent sort to me. A go-getter. <laughs> Ms. Everett certainly has initiative. She's not been any trouble to you, has she? Trouble? That girl has it stamped on her forehead in letters a mile high. <laughs> not that I can't deal with a chip like that. Well, I hope she works out. That lab is in a state and a half. And I've got enough to deal with caring for the rest of this old monster. So you've told me. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Right. Well, that's enough. Out we go. Uh, oh, I have to use the key. To my private, la the private laboratory. What is down there? Horrible, creepy things. I assume it's private for a reason. Like not even, not even his his housekeeper. The doorbell is ringing. Who can it be? Hmm. So I suppose we should, we must venture there before we open up. Oh, Dr. Styles, there's a package for you. Shall I take it down to the basement? I'll get it. Thank you, Stella. Is that just floating in the door? Or is there like a table there? In front of that the must door. Be my dialogue generator. Dialogue generator. Isn't that what people are for? What's in there and should I be scared? I want to do a session in the tank today, but my memories of Laura have been fading. I outlined a plan for revitalizing them on my video logs. This sounds creepy and horrible. Are you creating a body that then you're going to put Laura's brains, like your knowledge of, Law of Nora into it? Because this is kind of weird. 15th of September, Laura's nightgown has was laying on the bed when I went upstairs at midnight. Has Dalton... Mrs. Dalton denied having touched it. 25th of September, I went upstairs about 9pm, found the shower running. No one was in it, and the floor was dry. 2nd of October, around 11pm, went into the master bedroom and smelled Laura's perfume very strongly. The bottle was on the counter. It's normally in the cabinet above the sink. The lid was off. The top was wet. 7th of October, midnight. I was dressing for bed when I heard a sound in the room. It sounded like Laura brushing her hair before bed. I turned slowly and saw her brush floating in the air for several seconds before it crashed through the floor. 16th of October, 11am. Felt Laura's presence in the bed this morning. It consisted of real weight and form. Upon fully awakening, the shape disappeared. It was not a dream to do for today. Sci research, build RNG device, isolation tank session as outlined on videotape. <gasps> Word puzzle! Word puzzle! Woo! Word puzzle. Word puzzle. Word puzzle. Dr. Ramaskin invented these letter rolls. A random number generator controls the letters, so hypothetically one can create messages using only the mind. Dear Dr. Styles, you sounded anxious for this, so I had it couriered to you. As we discussed on the phone, the only thing you need to do is connect an RNG motor to my little invention here. Since you have my book, I won't bore you with details. I should, I should take another look at the instructions in Ramuskin's book before I put this thing together. Okay, and then we'll fiddle with things and try and see what happens. Click. Science. There have been thousands of legitimate scientific studies done on psi phenomena over the past 100 years by such top-notch universities as Princeton and Cambridge and Hull. The p uh, very few people will understand that reference. Um, the bulk of these studies was conducted in the following broad categories. Telepathy. 
one subject sending a picture or design from flashcards to another subject, one subject visiting an unknown location and sending thought pictures to another subject describing the location. Precognition. A subject predicting a card from a deck of five designs. A subject predicting the result of a random number generator. A subject predict predicting the fall of a die, otherwise known as a random number generator. Telekinesis. A subject mentally forcing the number that will appear on an RNG. A subject mentally forcing the results of a throw of a die. Some interesting facts about Psy. Psy. That are discovered in these experiments. One, studies where the subject was in a non-normal state of consciousness, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, dream state, scored higher than those conducted in a normal state of consciousness. This would indicate that there may be protective me mechanisms against Psy built into the ordinary waking state of mind. Two, the demonstration of psi effects of 1-10% to above pure chance is true of the general population. However, about 1% of the population scores much higher. This would indicate that powerful psi is a rare talent or gift akin to that of a mus musical, musical prodigy or a world-class athlete. Oh, they're the muscular prodigies. Oops. Three, groups of subjects working together have a greater psi effect than individuals, especially if related or in a bonded relationship. The highest psi results have been obtained by studies using random number generators or RNGs. Psi studies using random number generators or RNGs show the best results. An RNG is a device which randomly generates numbers between 1 and 39? It's an odd number to pick. Um, this type of device seems to work well with Psy, because if you try to mentally force the RNG to come up with a number, for example, 13, the fact that it might do so does not violate the laws of nature. After all, there is a 1 in 40 chance on each and every roll that a 13 will appear. Thus, forcing a 13 is an easier task for the mind than moving a ball or bending a spoon. However, if after 50 tries you've generated 10 instances of 13 instead of the 1 that would occur by pure chance, it is likely that Psy would take place. Uh, would, was taking place. Now, that um, that is... Uh, assuming the law of averages is true, which it isn't, um, you may end up with a larger number of 13s just because you're only doing 50 tries. It's when you approach an infinite number of tries that it will balance out to 1 in one over 40. Um, you may get more than that. I, I mean, what, what they say, 10 over 50 is 1 in 5? That's possible. I, I don't know what the confidence levels for that would be off the top of my head, especially because that's stats, and I only did one module of stats at university because I hated stats. Pure maths for the win. Uh, in a previous experiment, I used the basic idea of... I don't hate stats. It's just my least favourite part of maths. In a previous experiment, I used the basic idea of an RNG combined with a tray of Rolodex cards filled with the letters A to Z, plus one blank card to enable subjects to generate short words and phrases by the power of the mind. Each Rolodex was controlled by a flipping mechanism that operated as follows. The RNG motor was set to generate numbers from 0 to 26. If a 1 signal was received, it flipped to A. If a 2, it flipped to the letter B and so, so forth through the alphabet with 26 getting the letter Z. If the number 0 was received, the tray flipped to the blank card. I hope to allow subjects to build short words or phrases using the power of their mind by focusing one letter at a time on the tray and trying to make the letter they wanted to appear. After some trial and error, I found the settings that work best. First, I set the chances of any card change occurring to a very low probability. Since gener zero generated a blank card, I set the RNG motor to generate a zero 99% of the time. Thus, a Rolodex only rarely turned to any letter at all, upping the chance that when this occurred, it was quite deliberate. Then, to generate any letter with equal percentage, I set numbers 1 through 26 with the remaining 1%. Once a Rolodex once a Rolodex on the tray flipped to a letter, the tray would lock that letter and then move on to the next Rolodex. In this way, the RNG motor controlled only one letter at a time. Finally, all the other numbers should stay at 0, zero as they were not used in this experiment. They were remarkable, there were remarkable results which are being compiled for a major article. Any interested scientists are encouraged to do their own versions of this experiment. Right. Dialogue generator. RNG motor. A 1 to, 20, 1 to 99 set number generation frequency from 1% to... 99%, 0 set number inactive, percent set number generation frequency as average with the remaining percentage. Ah, okay. Okay, right. Okay. Good. Now I can get started. Okay. So we've got 0 is 
99. Percentage, percentage, percentage. So we want um, these to be zero. So we just set all of these to zero. And the rest have got the percent sign. And it seems to be correct. There we go. So what do I do? Okay, it is set properly. Now I should switch it on with the red button. Hit the button. There, that's got it. The dialogue generator is set correctly. I'm hoping Laura will be able to use it to communicate. Why am I terrified that I'm correct? I'll do a session in the tank. What? I'll do a session in the tank today, but first I want to collect items from around the house to help me strengthen my memories of Laura. Why are you talking about he Laura communicating when she's dead? What are you doing? Is that Laura's brain? It's a scanner. Is that Laura's brain? I don't need to make a new video log right. Let's have a look at it. Uh, my what? Wow, this is a long thing. No, it isn't. What was it called? Uh, brain Power. Published in the Science Magazine, 2000. The last century and a half have transformed our understanding of the human brain, the biological foundation on which our individual personalities are built. This article outlines basic facts about some of its key areas. The cerebrum consists of the two symmetric cerebral hemispheres. I mean, technically, they're... They're quarter spheres. Really, kind of. Uh, separated by a fissure. The outer layer of the cerebrum is called the cerebral cortex. The cortex is composed of grey matter. He's... He's... He's British. That should be an E. E for English, A for American. That's how you remember the grey spellings. Mostly nerve cell bodies and unmyelinated fibres. And is associated with higher brain functions such as learning and memory. The subcortical cerebrum is composed of white matter, mostly myelinated accents. Or myelinated accents. The corpus callo callosum is a large band of white fibers located beneath the cortex. It connects the left and right cerebral hemispheres, functioning as a conduit of communication between them. The, the massa intermedia, or the, interth the, interth the interthalamic Adhesion, or massa intermedia, is a small structure, about one centimetre in diameter, connecting the two halves of the thalamus. Thalamus. Thalamus? Thalamus. Thalamus. Its function remains unknown since no neurological deficient has been... Uh, or no neurological deficit has been observed based on its absence. In fact, the massa intermedia, which is larger in females, is only present in about four people out of five, more often in females than in males. Symbol, all the symbols. Yay! Correct grey matter spelling for British people. As we're in Oxford, British people. 